RMP units. I'm already integrated. That's right, I'm your daddy. <laughs> There'll be a telephonic check-in each 45 minutes, but I trust our more experienced street personnel will be liberally forthcoming with aid and sucker. <laughs> Governor and Mrs. Lucas Sandler will be dedicating the new Von Steuben Unemployment Office at 10 a.m. this morning. Prior to said christening, the governor's party plans a whistle stop at this precinct house. I urge you all to refrain from the sort of unfortunate behavior which marred us on his last visit here in 73 when one veteran officer felt impelled by reasons unknown to present the governor with the miracle of a moon at midday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I might have penned a similar cautionary note vis-a-vis -vis the going away party this evening of Patrolman Anthony Tisa. Captain Frillo and I are urgently concerned that uh, behavior remain decorous at this co-ed affair. Moreover, word from the club Como management is that pantyhose in the plumbing system will no longer be tolerated. <laughs> Were you looking at it? I didn't laugh. Two more sightings yesterday of the Phantom. Snatching a half dozen cantaloupes from a Korean greengrocer on Hudson. Oh. Harassing a meter maid working the projects north of 133rd. For our newcomers, the Phantom of the Hill appears to be a guy living in the sewer system. Six feet five or six, heavily bearded and scarred, perhaps drastically deformed. Dressed in rags or worse, incapable of speech in the mother tongue or otherwise. He bears a manifest and virulent hatred for police. And the standing reward for his collar is three months without weekend. All right, that's it. Let's roll and let's be very careful out there. You ever actually seen this guy? Who? No, oh, this weirdo down the sewer system. I mean, the Phantom. Well, I can't exactly say, Dorsey, although we did spot this huge, slimy dude rummaging the dumpsters over yeah, there. Yeah, he like ducked that. into a manhole before we could see him. That couldn't be it. Falker. Mean sheets. Is that the one with all the hairbrush spanking? Oh. <laughs> Move. Move! Bobby. I don't know what you're wearing there. Minister, what? Minister, it's compulsory. Ah. Uh, name. Curtis. Curtis what? Curtis Interruptus.
muffins for breakfast. I'm coming out of the john. He's ordering six grand muffins and a double stewed prunes. Hey, you know I must have got occasional problems with regularity, my man, you know? <laughs> Excuse me, detective. Can get I out of here, man. About... Just keep walking and get out of here. Right. You leave it? First hour on the beat. Kid's doing his best to blow a murder one collar. Mm. Hey, comes Edwards. Bubba? You're behind his mind. Thanks a lot. Welcome to the hill. Come on, let's move it out of here. Hey, are you okay? You cut your lip. How'd you like to suck the toxins out? What are you gonna do me, man? I'm sorry, you man. I want to say one more time. Check it out. Hey, you got a problem in that? Hey, you got a man, you want to go home to the You got a big mouth, Jack. Hey, you want to go home? I'm going to you, son. Come on, bro. Come on. Hey, Now, first thing, when you get kids like this, you gotta look for a piece. Second of all, when you're separated, you gotta really mean it. Third of all, don't be afraid to call for backups. You know, it's just a fender like this. Okay, I'm gonna talk to these kids now. You watch. Uh, I think you get your carbon reversed there, but... precinct in the state, Frank Frillo. Frank, the governor. Frank, and Mrs. Sandler. My pleasure. And uh, Lamont. Your fight is my fight, Captain. We stand shoulder to shoulder on the battleground of urban blight. And the battleground it is, Governor. Lieutenant Hunter, EAT. Why, just last week, my men and I traded cartridges with a cadre of Hispanic 211 artists in a two-hour project standoff that was right out of Teddy's little number on San Juan Hill. So three minutes we behind, sir. Well, excuse me, Captain. Uh, appreciate the input, officer. Lieutenant. This way, Governor. Mrs. Sandler. 
Just there yesterday. I'll be there as soon as I can after work. As soon as I can. As soon as I can. Goodbye. What are you doing here? Talk to your dad. He's lousy. He's in a home. Oh. <laughs> What's up? I was a new job. Michael, I have never seen such a cesspool of criminal activity. I warned you. Didn't I warn you? You stay out of trouble up there. Well, that's what I wanted to discuss with you. What? I overhear things. And I could certainly use the extra money. What are you talking about? Mick, I want to be your snitch. <laughs> Come on, get out of here. I got paperwork to do. I'm serious. I want us to work together. And I find law enforcement terribly exciting. Terribly exciting, huh? You see that gorilla in there? He just got arrested for breaking both a guy's legs and then garroting him to death. My. He does have a certain ruthless quality. Mm-hmm. The guy he did all that to was a snitch. That exciting enough for you? I'm not afraid, Mick. And I know about a holdup. I heard a guy talking about it at the bar this morning. Where? When? Sometime this afternoon. A pawn shop on Jefferson and 143rd. Just the one guy? I think so. I'm not going to pay you for this, you understand? If it pans out later, maybe we can talk. Oh, Mick. Oh, my, Michael. Gentlemen prefer leather? That's evidence, hairball. Excuse me, Captain. We picked up the suspect in the Castaneda homicide. Good. Good work, Neil. Everything in order on the bus? It seems so. Autopsy report's not in the file, but we'll run by the coroner's office and pick up a copy. And do yourself a favor, see Nidor personally. Upper duodenum contains whitish fluid. Greenish yellow bile flows freely from orifice of common bile. Pancreas pale. Liver normal. With a certain gray cirrhotic charm. Found this joker in a subway john with a quart of industrial strength drain cleaner down his pipes. Hey, it's the holiday season. Let the record indicate that Detective LaRue is looking a little green around the gills. What can I do for you guys? Well, we never got an autopsy report on that Castaneda homicide last month. What's a Castaneda? Ramon T, October the 17th, strangulation, DOA, mercy. Go pull it for him, will you, Radley? 
And just be a man of guys, make yourself at home. Stomach distended. Contains about 150 cc's of a milky fluid. Somewhat of the consistency of my wife's Bernays sauce. So. <laughs> Is Deli okay for you today, sir? Yeah, I'll get me a uh, pastrami on rye, side of horseradish, dill pickle, apple pie, hole of mold, and a root beer. Two chili dogs, no onions, an order of fries and an orange egg. Mm. Listen, Kosic, uh, forget that pastrami. Give me three chili dogs, everything on them. You guys want a sandwich or something? No, thanks, Wally. I had a big breakfast, man, back. Oh, do you believe this? This tape isn't even rolling, Gretzky! I've been spent the better part of an hour talking into a dead battery here. I'm sure we got the digestive dosage. So. We'll get some batteries for this damn thing. We'll have to take it out of petty cash. Just buy the damn thing! What do you mean you can't find them? Check the pending file. Check with Sylvia! Uh... It'll be all right, guys. I'll I'll pull it for you myself. Get it to you in a day or two. Take notes, will you, Gretzky? Uh, gallbladder, so much ropey fluid. Hey, uh, look, I, Wally. Uh, we got a hot suspect. We're pulling into interrogation in less than two hours. Not to mention having to handle an I ADA in the guy's attorney. I said I'd get it to you. All right. We need it now. You need. You need. Well, let me tell you what I need. Five extra pathologists, for starters. A half dozen scrubbers. Ten hours extra day in the work day. And a budget that isn't some kind of in-house municipal joke. That's what I need. I got corpses stacked up here till next Easter. I haven't had a lousy vacation since Nixon was in office. And the last thing I need is a couple of damn pushy mid-level grunts coming in here telling me how to do my job! Now then. All bladder is filled with somewhat ropey, but otherwise clear dark green fluid. So, what makes you so sure I'm going to get hit today, huh? I'm not sure. You don't even know if this snitch of yours is on the level. No, I don't. Hey, that lunch of yours is gonna drive my business away. Look, Murray. Why don't I just take a hike and when this creep shows up, you deal with him? Hey, I ain't afraid of no sneaker. Yeah, I've been held up more than any guy in this entire block. She's a Murray. How you doing? What do you say? Well, what can we do for you today? Uh, man, uh, how about this little thing right here? Shut him down, go away! Murray, come here. As soon as the game's over. Bye. Uh, bye. What's up? Oh, nothing. I just got a date for Tisa's party tonight with the guy who plays basketball against the Harlem Globetrotters. He's a loser. What do you mean? You never even met the guy. He's a loser. 
know what? I hate it when you do this. You always do this. The guy is only in town for three days. Paul went to all the trouble to get me a date, and you got to start on him on right I'm, away. I'm just stating fact, Luz. Anybody who plays against the Trotters loses. It appears from this arrest report I've got my work cut out for me. If we have everything we need, we can go to trial next week. There's nothing worse than a floating Italian. 1042 Elmwood Avenue, apartment 22. Hmm. Apartment number again? 20. Two. Present occupation. Starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. Now let's just skip the preliminaries and get down to basics. Now what kind of deal can you cut for me? Mr. Edwards. Don't Mr. Edwards me, PD. Now you can't cut me a deal. I'll find me a real lawyer who can. There's no point in discussing a deal at this time if we can even circumstantially establish your innocence in the matter. Well, good luck, lady. Shall I interpret that as an ambition of guilt? What difference does it make? It makes a big difference in how I approach your defense. Of course, if you're not entirely comfortable discussing it at this time... Um. Plenty comfortable. Did you do it? No. No, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I was in El Salvador that week, doing some charity work for the Red Cross. Mr. Edwards, I'm not in the mood today for sarcastic adolescent bullying from someone who ought to be thankful I'm trying to help him. I'll have you reassigned. Hey, lady, wait. While you're at it, Ray, get me ADA Burns. Got a real potential horror story on our hands, Frank. I told you, eight men for crowd control is insufficient. That's just as much your responsibility, Anderson. I never recommended a visit to this precinct in the first place, sir. Went down 20 minutes ago at the Governor's Decker Avenue whistle stop. Took him right out of the limousine. For God's sake, man, do you mind? Took who? They took the governor? Not the governor, Ray. Lamont. Lamont? Somebody took the governor's wife's down? Read my lips, Frank. She became absolutely hysterical when she found out. Had to be sedated right in front of the Channel 10 minicam. Now, we're going to have to mobilize on this one, and I mean fast. I don't need to tell you the crisis of confidence we'll be facing when it gets out that the largest metro squad in the entire state can't even ensure the basic human rights of a nine-pound Lhasa Apso. Anderson here from the governor's office is going to keep a lid on the media flow. LaRue, Washington, get in here. You too, Goldstein. Goldblum. First off, we'll need a door-to-door -door in the vicinity of the snatch. Howard, Phil! And a couple of your desk boys to handle the phone calls. What phone calls? The governor has approved a $1,000 reward for Lamont's safe return. It's going out over the local airwaves within the hour. Who's Lamont? You're going to use precinct phones for some lost dog reward? Give me a little credit, Frank. We'll just run a couple of extensions off your private line. Now. We'll need 12 uniforms for a perimeter search, Phil. 
Eight eaters, Howard. Not a man less. You just hold on a minute. I have three homicide investigations in the works, five rapes, several dozen assaults, and miscellaneous other felonies, and a continuing incoming tally of all of the above, and you expect me to devote fully one-third of my active day shift to some overbred lapdog? We're not talking dog, Frank. We're talking image. And image-wise, like it or not, this overbred lapdog's got a higher gubernatorial profile than the state bird, whatever the hell it is. Uh, Swallow. Peregrine Falcon. Chief. Falcon Peregrine. Hello. Just a minute, please. Well, image-wise, how do you suppose the electorate of this state is going to take such gross expenditure? Got a handle on it, Frank. Frank, line six. Not now, Ray. In addition, men, I'm authorizing overtime funds for all necessary personnel for as long as this takes. Up to 20 grand, let's say. Frank, I think you might want to take this call. For all. And I swear, Anderson, if these figures leak out to those local media flax, it's going to be your butt on the waffle iron right alongside mine. You Vince, what? Sidebar stories only, Chief. Human interest. No stats on appropriations. Right. I understand. Yeah. Sure. All right, men. Let's get to it. Look at this priest. The man can't be serious. You heard him. I'll be back in an hour, Phil. Uh, Captain? About the Castaneda homicide, it seems they can't locate the autopsy report on the COs. It's a regular three-ring circus down there, Captain. Night off practically blew a gasket and we pressed him for it. Well, I'm on my way downtown anyway. I'll pick it up on the way back. Uh, Francis, aside from the obvious canine situation, is everything all right? <sighs> yeah, just great, Phil. They got herself thrown into jail down a traffic court. Judges holding her in contempt. Captain Farrell. Thank you. Frank, before you say anything, I have never been treated so rudely in my whole life. The arrogance. The open hostility. What did you do? Me? Nothing. I just came down to court to plead my innocence like an American citizen. And got yourself thrown into jail on account of a traffic ticket? You must have done something out of the ordinary. Said something? Sure. If you count exercising your free speech in this supposedly free country something out of the ordinary. What did you call him? Frank, he kept interrupting me. He, he wouldn't look at my pictures. And so you? Well, I might have implied that he had an unnaturally close relationship with his mother. Well, can you blame me? I was upset. Court is going to close in a couple of hours. If you don't apologize right now, you're going to be stuck in there until tomorrow morning. Well, bail me out. No. Contempt of court is not bailable. You are in until you apologize. Well, thank you very much, mister. Then I'm going to stay right here. I'm not without internal resources, Frank. I'll write an article about the abuses of judicial power. I'll, I'll go on a hunger strike. I'm not going to argue the possible salutary effects of a hunger strike. But Are you saying I'm overweight? I'm simply saying... Faye, I don't have time for this. If you want to play Joan of Arc on account of a traffic ticket, be my guest. But I'm going to take Frank Jr. home with me, and you can stay in here until you rot. How about I come over to your cell and keep you company, sweet pea? Frank! Frank! 
What do you think of the captain? He's okay. It seems like a real straight arrow, though. Hmm. Well, at least he knew our names. <laughs> that was really nice, Sergeant S. I was asking us what we like to be called. Esther House. He looks like he must have been a real tough one. Looks like he's still tough. Do you really think we should go to that party tonight? Sure. I mean, do you think they were just trying to be polite? Oh, come on, we're going to be working with these guys. They invited us. I mean, police! Hey, police! Over here, quick! He's beating up my brother, man. Hey! He's beating up my brother. Come on, he's beating up my brother, man. You're a great guy, officer. And why you help your buddy out? Mrs. Ferrillo? Do you have something that you wish to say to this court? No. Approach the bench, Mrs. Ferrillo. I've been a traffic court judge for slightly more than seven months now. And this is the first time the need has arisen to incarcerate a citizen. Well, maybe it's the first time that a citizen has ever stood up to you. Mrs. Ferrillo, if you continue to behave before this... You know, court... I bet you're like this at home, aren't you? You want to know what's wrong with you? You don't know how to back down or admit you're wrong. It's the way to lose a marriage, mister. Mrs. Ferrillo, aside from the fact that you have mistaken my present marital condition, may I remind you that you have already spent some time in the clink, and I'd be more See? than... Well, let me tell you something, mister. I have a case here. I have facts. I have pictures. And I know what I know. Now, if I have to go to jail, I'll go to jail. But I am not going to grovel around here just because you're some... <laughs> What's so funny? You are. You're a real pistol, lady. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Mrs. Ferrillo. <laughs> We're both very tired. And it's late, and uh, not anybody that's willing to spend a week in jail. A week? must either be a glutton for punishment or very sure of the rightness of her position. So, what have you got? Well, I was on my way home from the supermarket, completely minding my own business, when some jack-booted highway patrol jerk on his fascist motorcycle hauled me over for allegedly not making a left-hand turn in a mandatory left-hand turn lane. This is Officer Brzezinski, the arresting officer. Well, wait a minute. I got a better one than that. Here. 
Uh, what's the name of that uh, stuff again, Frank? Castaneda. Ramon Castaneda. 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 We never sent you an autopsy report. Sylvia! Sylvia! You don't believe this place, Frank. Sylvia! Woman's been here almost as long as I have. She's worthless. You know, in 1972, we had an operating budget of 1.2 million. Ten years later, we're operating on 1.3. Can't get decent people anymore. We're dying down here. Oh, I don't know. Sylvia's all right. She... <laughs> Here. What's that? What do you think it is? It's Noogie Fisher's ear. Remember? We sent Teddy Jakes away for 50 years. All we had was Noogie's ear and in a glove compartment. You were the homicide detective. Remember that? Here. You want to keep it? Go ahead. Wow. Sylvia! Wally, look, this is my situation. We're doing court day after tomorrow for the preliminary, and the DA's office is really pressing me for this autopsy. Oh. Well, Frank, there's got to be a right here somewhere. I'll, uh... I'll dig it out, and I'll have it on your desk at 5 o'clock today, okay? And, uh, Frank, I really feel terrible about this morning. I mean, I jumped all over your guys for just trying to do their job, and... You tell them for me, would you? Yeah, I will. Five o'clock. Right, Wally? On your desk. Promise. Okay, kid? I appreciate it. Okay. Ray. Ray. Yes, Frank. Seems the reward offer has sparked community interest. They emptied out the candles. <laughs> hey, so, so who do you think, huh? Uh, uh, would this be that egg dog that we're looking for? You have glued hair to his skin. Oh, you, you think it's too much, huh? Yes. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's the dog's got a skin condition, huh? The doctor told me what to get, but I can't afford it. Ray, clear them all out of here, would you? No, come on. No, she can really look yeah. too well. Come on, come on, get out! <laughs> it's a dog eat dog world, well, Yeah. How much? Where? You have the dog with you? Okay, listen, who am I talking to here? No, the governor's not available right now. Well, can you prove you have the dog? Can you uh, make him bark for me? I think they may have him, Frank. In my office. They say they want $10,000 in old bills left in a phone booth at 114th and Shattuck in one hour or they shoot the dog. No cops. Let's pay it. You gotta be kidding. The hell I am. Just keep the press away. You're crazy if you think this story won't leak out. In addition to which, I'll scrub your feet in the window of Kirby's department store if any part of that cockamamie phone call pans out. Henry, I want the gangs in here by 4 o'clock for a meeting. Thank you for your input, Captain. But I can't afford to have Lamont getting shot. 
Hi. Can I have area code 311-555-9600? What's this? What's this? What are you doing to me? I leave the shop for two minutes, and I come back and I find you dealing me out of house and home. Look at this. Cameras, radios, mixers. Somebody don't hold me up soon. I'm going to have to file for bankruptcy. Murray, I got the whole schmear for 186 bucks from a Cuban bookie headed upstate on a two to four. 186 bucks? That's right. All it is? 186 bucks? <laughs> you know, son, if you ever decide to give up this detective business, the porn industry can offer you a very rewarding future. I'm gonna keep that in mind, Murray. Oh, how you doing? What can we do for you? Thinking about pawning my electric guitar. If the price is right. Well, that depends. <laughs> I mean, what are we talking? A Fender, a Gretsch, a Stratocaster, six string, twelve strings? 12 gauge, Smith & Wesson, two barrels, one trigger. And believe me, it's in tune. Hands on the counter, shortstop. All the money now. Now or I'll take your face off with this thing. Lasso, Apso, <laughs> or was it Lassie Apsi? <laughs> what did you say there for me four times, Frillo? Lamu Aspo. No, man, it's Lapu Zapu. Lassa Apso is the breed. All we want is your cooperation. What is the dog's name? Jerry? See it. Bug's name is Lamont. <laughs> See what? Hey, Ferrillo. How am I going to tell my people Lamont? Does the mud have a nickname? I got a brother named Lamont. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know about yeah. the brother. Yeah. We all know about Lamont. <laughs> <laughs> What? Guys, this is a very important animal we're talking about. This animal is a token of friendship from the people of Tibet. I put to you two scenarios, gentlemen. In the first, a civic-minded citizen or citizens step forward, no questions asked, and receive a $1,000 reward. In the second, a $10,000 ransom is presented to that same citizen who then gets three years upstate as a bonus. I get the impression you're implying gang involvement in this canine affair. I'm simply implying, Jesus, that whoever stole that animal will be inordinately punished considering the vast resources we've devoted to this problem. I do grudgingly admire your initiative, not to mention your sense of humor. That abortive little phone booth keeper, okay, but I think it's time to talk turkey, don't you? Or, as the case seems to be, canine. If anybody knows anything, I want to hear about it by 9 o'clock tomorrow. Please, guys, try to keep perspective. In one sense, Lamont is Mrs. Sandler's, but in a larger sense, he belongs to all of us. Yes? <laughs> what part of this dog belongs to Mr. Martinez? I see you outside. Outside. Oh. Outside. Anything you want. 
Captain. I want to give Eddie Gregg 50 bucks. I think it's cheap dollars, Captain. He's the one that gave me the pawn shop bus this afternoon. Hold on just a second. Thank you, Captain. Frank, the DA's office on line four. Did we get the autopsy report from Nighthawk? Yes, just came in. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah, Irwin. Uh-huh. I just got it. I'm just looking at it, Irwin. Well, I can have somebody bring it down to you. Yeah, sure. No. Yeah. Irwin, listen, I got a crisis on my hands here. I'll, I'll, I'll call you back, all right? I'll call you back, Irwin. Yeah. Here's your 50 bucks, now get lost. When will I see you again? How should I know? Mick, I've got something really big for you. Maybe we can have a late supper after I get off work and talk about it. Look, hairbag, you're gonna be a snitch. You never want to be seen in public with me. And you especially never want to be seen up here. Then how do I get in touch with you? Call me at this number. Wait a minute. You could call me at my home phone, too. I'll keep this in strictest confidence, Mick. When can we meet? I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. Tell me where. I don't know. Someplace. I don't know right now. It's got to be someplace uh, dark, out of the way. Oh. Like a parking garage, you dirtball. Sounds good to me, Mick. I'll call you first thing in the AM. You won't regret it. Frank, Nido left for the day. You want me to try his house? No, I think I know I can find him. <laughs> the mortuary guy says, let me check my inventory. I may need some mortuary money. <laughs> hey, Frank. Boy. Be with you in a minute, kid. <laughs> so he leaves the poor, goes upstairs. He leaves the poor slob alone with his death. <laughs> he, he's trying not to look, but he's scared out of his tree. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the step goes. <laughs> <laughs> the kid, the kid drops his brief, his, his sample case. He runs out of there, gets in his car, drives away, and he's never been seen since. <laughs> it's a true story, swear to God. <laughs> Boy, could I talk to you for a minute? Uh, oh, sure, Frank. <laughs> Come on, let's get a table. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, you want a beer? Oh, no. Oh, that's right. Hey, Ace. Yeah, you want another one? Uh, and a soda. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I don't know, Frank. I've been cutting up strips for 35 years. I come to bars and tell stories about dead bodies. <laughs> I think that indicates a certain narrowness of interest. But we have a problem, Wally. Uh huh? What about? The autopsy. Uh huh? So talk to me. Talk to me? This is a mess. If I try to sell this at Edwards Preliminary, they're going to laugh me right out of court. I don't know how I get a question, my lord. Don't try to pull the same crap with me as you tried to pull with my detectives this morning. This report is indefensible, and you know it. The physical description is sketchy. There's no blood workup at all. And the diagrams are totally inadequate. How did you do this from memory? You lost the originals, and then you lost the copies, and so you figured... What the hell, I'll win it, right? 
Tell me I'm wrong. All right, Frank. Okay. But you saw what a zoo that place is. Look, you just send me your police report. Give me 24 hours and I'll give you an autopsy. I swear to God you'd be able to convict your mother on it. That's not good enough. What? I want you to pull him up. Oh, Frank. Pull him up and do it again. Frank, did you ever do an autopsy on a three-week-old stiff? Wally. Wally, you used to like your work, and you were the best. What happened? Now, don't you start with me, Frank. I knew you when you were a 24-year-old snot nose whose main area of expertise was the inside of a shot glass. So don't go get your plans in an uproar with me, kid. Just do your job, Wally. I like to propose another toast today. Short, black haired, brown eyed graduating class from the police academy of Sergeant Esther House's finest. Salute. Cheers. And I'd like to propose hey, another just toast. Rest the toast. You rest to the prettiest lady that ever graced this sorry side of the tracks. Here's the slumming with the city's finest. Now drink up. Come on, Teresa, don't be a wet old rag. I've had enough, Andy. What? I have had enough. Well, excuse me, lady. I've had enough. I would have had the Don Perignon out here, but my credit line's a little short right now. Come on, Rapunzel. Let down your blonde hair. Let down your blonde hair. I got less hair to let down. <laughs> I got less hair to let down. I love you, Joe. I love you. Coffee says this guy used to work for the sewer department. You know, he knows all 80 miles of the system like the back of his hand. Claims he goes after anything with a badge, too. Well, makes sense if you heard the dude's story. What story is that? Well, back in 1978, this uh, married lady and midtown sergeant were found hacked to death in the flop house over in East Utica. Butt and hole naked. Warrants Ugh. went out for the husband. Oh, you mean uh, that guy Travis Pogro? Yeah, we heard about him over in Midtown. Six feet five, 285 pounds, disappeared without a trace. Wait, wait. And, and they think this Travis Pogro's the Phantom? What do you think? <laughs> Give me a break. There's no Phantom down there. Oh, of course there ain't, Hernandez. <laughs> I got this right here falling off of my skateboard. You mean the Phantom did that? No, this, no, no. This was Marie Osmond. <laughs> this freak pulled my leg halfway down a storm drain on Richmond last year. He'd have chomped the rest of it off the knee freeway? wouldn't have been my partner. Very sweet of you back there. Mm. And that lipstick all over. Hey, good help. What the hell's going on here? Ah, uh, this is slightly drunken come on, I guess. <laughs> hmm? uh, look, Teresa, you're a very lovely lady, and uh, I like you a lot. But, uh, you know, Renko's my friend. I like you a lot, too. Well, now, now just cut it out. 
Look, you're his girl. Well, what if I wasn't? I just want to thank you for covering for me, okay? I didn't cover for you. Look, tomorrow's gonna be different. I know it. I'm sorry. I asked Sister Huss for a new partner. That's it. I've had it. What? Don't you think I've waited long enough for the creep? Oh, your basketball player hasn't shown up yet? It is the last time I ever call a jock. Hey, come on, let's have a drink. Excuse me. To. Are you Lucy? I'm Doug. Doug Munson? Oh. I'm sorry I'm late. The game went double overtime. Oh, how'd you do? Lost. Uh, uh, this is my friend Joe Coffey. Doug Munson. <laughs> He says that you've had quite a long losing streak. 1,912 games. I've got a table over here. <laughs> oh, everybody's looking. Who's looking? Hmm? I don't know. You know. Why don't we go someplace where nobody can look? As of this hour, no suspects have yet been collared in the dog napping of Lamont, the governor's wife's prized Las Opso. However, authorities are working rapidly to get a leg up on the situation. Although there's been an unusually tight leash on information coming out of Hill Street, it has been rumored that the search for the nine and one half pound Tibetan lap dog is expected to take a bite out of the city budget to the tune of $30,000 in overtime pay, an expenditure that, come December, might very well put City Hall in the doghouse. Anyone with information... Whatever happened to serious journalism? Died years ago, Perilla, at the hands of a blow dryer. Is encouraged to call 555 I don't 